everyone, and welcome to the 21st episode of Nina in Knitting. My name is Nina, and I live in central Finland in Uvascula with my husband, our two kids, and a dog. Uh, I'm not on Instagram, but you can find me on Ravelry as Ninima. And we also have a Ravelry group called Nina in Knitting Podcast. And um, I'll put a link to the episode thread with show notes here on YouTube in the description box. <clears throat> yeah. Um, hi. It's been about three weeks, a little more. <clears throat> uh, I had thought about recording a little earlier, but, you know, life. Um, but today is Monday, the 14th of August. And we're back to the normal everyday life. The kids started school and daycare last Wednesday. And uh, I'll be on vacation just for a little while. But still, I do have some work stuff to do, even though officially <laughs> I'm not working yet. Um, yeah, uh, my son started middle school. So he's 13 and middle school is uh, grades from 7th to 9th here in Finland. I don't know how the system works in other countries, but uh, I think it's elementary school grades from 1st to 6th. So we go to school when the year we turn 7 and that's the first grade and then all through the sixth grade you're in elementary school and now my my son is a big boy and uh, he started middle school uh, he so far he's liking it all right and of course uh, the little one uh, the one that you saw in my last episode quite a bit uh, she went back to the same daycare center and well, she's enjoying it very much she has a lot of friends there a lot of things to do and it's it's all good uh, I'm at home alone uh, <laughs> my husband's working and and um, you know the kids are at school and daycare so I'm here alone with the dog he may bark at the mailman if he happens to show up but uh, otherwise he's just sleeping somewhere peacefully he, he doesn't do anything when we're at home in inside um so yeah i i had thought about recording last weekend i had all my stuff with me we were in the countryside but uh yeah well didn't have a chance to do that then uh on sunday it was really weird weather raining and then the sun was shining and the next minute it will pour down rain so you know, didn't want to try and try my luck at it so this is me in here the sun is shining uh it's about 17 degrees i think outside so that's in the 60s fahrenheit i think and uh yeah, we're, we're doing all right. Um, for the Gravel group, uh, to my delight, there's been some action going on in there. Um, I've had some comments in the episode thread. I've had some comments um, below the video on YouTube, and then I've had some um, messages uh, in the, the the introductions or welcome thread and and the ask me anything thread and I'll go through them a little bit this time and then I'll save something for next time and future <laughs> episodes but just to remind you that um, there is an introductions thread all the episode threads with show notes and then an ask me anything thread where you can ask well you can ask anything uh, and then I'll just 
decide what I'm going to um, answer. And yeah, it's it's all been good <laughs> so far. So nothing too uh, personal or you know, not, no questions that I wouldn't want to answer. Yeah. I have my show notes down here. Don't want to forget anything. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna talk about the the comments and the, the the questions I've gotten towards the end of this episode. Uh, I'm going to start with the one year podiversary giveaway, <clears throat> just because it's uh, kind of linked to one of my FOs. And then I have quite a few FOs. I have a whip and one technically a whip because I'm already uh, swatching, so kind of two whips. And um, yeah, well, my stash enhancements are linked to my whips, so that's that's all the things, yeah, and the questions and the comments uh, at the end of this episode. Yeah. Okay, first of all, um, the giveaway. Uh, Somebody, somewhere, after my last episode, commented and asked if I could, you know, showcase some local diaries. Uh, I was trying to find the comments now when I was doing my show notes, but I I don't know. I just couldn't find it. But I, <laughs> when I do, I will uh, give credit to whoever the, the idea came from. But anyway, this somebody uh, commented and asked if I could uh, showcase some local diaries. And well, local, as in in central Finland, I don't know any. And if you do, please uh, give me a hint. <laughs> I'd like to, I'd love to, you know, go over and, and know, get to know new dyers. But I'm just going to expand and uh, the term local <laughs> to being. Finnish because I do know some Finnish tires and what I thought I could do is just whenever I order something from a Finnish tire I could maybe tell something a little bit more about this one tire or company whatever it is uh, so the first one that I thought of is one that I wanted to buy some yarn from, so that's why she's she's here now, or she's she comes first. <laughs> I'm talking about Lanitium X Machina, uh, and I think it is a one-person company, a woman called Nea. Gord, I think I forgot. Anyway, now uh, she dyes yarn in southern Finland in Helsinki, which is our capital, uh, and um, she dyes yarn and fiber. I think uh, she's been around for several years. Uh, she's one of the the uh, sponsors or the sponsors for the Tour de Soc this year and she was also sponsoring uh, the, the event last year so that's how I sort of uh, got to know about her and her dying and um, I'm sure she's super busy with with the tour and all the, the orders that people have um, placed because I, I did contact her and you know ask a couple of things from her when I was um, ordering the yarn and um, she just said that yeah she'd get, get back to me but I'm, I'm sure just she hasn't had the time because 
uh, when I look at the the listings, the rank lists from the Tour of Soc, uh, a lot of people are using her yarn. So because that's one of the sponsors, and you get one sponsor point for using sponsor yarn. Uh, yeah. So uh, this everything that I am talking about here is either what I've found myself or what I found on her website. So anyway, uh, Lonitio Max Machina, the name is Latin. It, it means wool from the machine. Um, and I'm not 100% sure on the pronunciation of the last word. I have taken Latin because I had to. It was compulsory to everybody who uh, studied French or Roman languages at the university. Uh, but, uh, well, we didn't talk about <laughs> machines <coughs> or machina, uh, but I know that the sh sound doesn't exist in uh, Latin, so it must be e either machina or machina with the h or the h. Either one. Lanidium x. And I think it's machina. I don't know how she came up with that name. That's one of the things that I was curious about. But, you know, anyway, it stands out a little bit because it's not English <laughs> or Finnish. Um, yes. Uh, she dies to order and she has 14 bases that she can um, choose from on her website. Uh, mainly fingering weight, but also DK weight yarns. And uh, I have two uh, different bases here to show you. I have used uh, her glitter sock base before. Last year I ordered some after uh, the tour last year. And then I ordered some basic sock fingering weight yarn to be uh, a giveaway to you and for myself, of course, because the, the color is just great. Um, so first of all, I'm going to show you the basic sock uh, base, the one that I ordered for myself also. So this skein is her basic sock. So that is 75% superwash wool. 25% nylon and the colorway is called Destinations Vancouver. I have a here in there. <laughs> it is beautiful. It is just beautiful. And um, I'm going to show you in just a little bit how it knits up because I've already knit a pair of socks from it. It is just amazing. So this is one, um, this is her card. <laughs> this is um, a giveaway that I ordered for you. But since I was ordering these two skeins and was asking her loads of questions, uh, she also wanted to include another skein to give to you. And this is on the glare sock base. Uh, it has some Gostolina. I think you can see. So this is 70% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and 5% stellina. And the colorway is called gr grotesque. And this is, I think, her old card. I got one of these last year. Uh, but, you know, it's this sort of darker, darker colors, Purple, blue, brown, very nice with the gold stellina. Oh my goodness, I have so much hair on it already. Yeah, so since she gave this to give to you, this is going to be a second giveaway. So if you uh, pop over to the Ravelry group to the one year anniversary giveaway thread 
Oh, wow, that's a mouthful. Um, and you leave a comment in there. You can, you have an opportunity to win either this or this game. So I'm going to draw two numbers from there. And um, I'm going to close it in two weeks. I did check the date, but I forgot it already. So it's not, uh, I think I'm going to close the thread on Sunday in two weeks. So this week, the Sunday will be, I think, first maybe, so it could be 29th. I'm going to cor correct myself here on the screen <laughs> if I'm wrong. Anyway, that's when I, I'll be closing the thread. So everybody who comments there has an opportunity to to win one of these. And then I'm going to um, announce the winners next time. So yeah, these are two bases that, that she has. She has some cashmere, um, some MC and some merino cashmere nylon bases and uh, something with um, Oh my goodness, I'm losing words. Um, well, anyway, different pace. Uh, yeah, Lanitium Mex Machina is one of the finished diaries that, that people, oh, I think more or less all around the world, but in, in other countries than just Finland also know about um, it's a very nice yarn very nice colorways yeah that's it so head on to the Reveler group uh, to the thread and leave a comment and you can get a chance to win one of those uh, I'm going to put a direct direct link to the giveaway thread also here in the de description box yeah. Then let's get on to the finished objects. Well, first of all, <laughs> there was one that I had just forgot about. I had done it uh, in May. Uh, it's a crochet project and it's a, a grocery bag like this. I did use uh, a pattern because I never do anything without a pattern. Uh, I'm one of those people. And the pattern was designed for a different kind of yarn. I think mine was thicker, so the, the bottom of it is kind of curling up, but that doesn't matter. It's just the back. So if I take this skein, then, you know, something to, to, um, some groceries and I was actually going to uh, knit these kind of bags for all the uh, daycare teachers that my my daughter has because that's what, what I do or what we tend to do at the, the end of uh, spring we give gifts give presents to the <coughs> <clears throat> sorry to the teachers but it took me so long to finish this that I just knew I couldn't I didn't have time to do three or four four of them three three or four yeah but uh, I don't know about the yarn it must be um, a cotton blend it's something that I bought on eBay maybe last year but I can't be sure because the writing is, I think, in Chinese. I don't read Chinese. But yeah, it has 30% of something, 20% of something else, and 50% of a third fiber, maybe. 50 grams. And um, 
be Chinese. Yeah, it must be Chinese. Um, uh, the pattern was actually for a bigger bag, but I just, I knew I was running out of, or running low on yarn, so I just did the handles earlier than in the pattern. And it was a good thing that I did, because this is how much yarn I have left. <laughs> so it's pretty good that I stopped when I did. And I used uh, 3.5 3 mil crochet hook. Mm, I don't know what that is in, in, uh, in the US, but maybe I'll find some info and put it. Yeah, well, that's an old, old FO, something that I just forgot about. Uh, but then the more recent ones, after the ones that I have finished after uh, last time I recorded. First of all, there is the second stage of the Tuolo Sock. And it's this wonderful, gorgeous... Um, work sock. This pattern is called Gandeletar. Uh, the designer is a Finnish, Finnish uh, designer called Tinaku or TQ on Ravelry. And um, I used Altekunste yarns here. Let me just, I think I have a ball band. Here somewhere, I should. I mean, I prepared for this, yes. So, oh, this Alte Kunste Socken Wolle 420. It's 25% <coughs> wool and 20, oh no, 75% wool. Sorry, dropped it, and 25% nylon. Polyamide something. Um, the colors I used this uh, beige or light brown is called sand. Uh, this is chocolate, and uh, green here is limet. And uh, well, first of all, there's this. I'm gonna show it in the other because there are two socks. So first of all, you start. It's a cuff down sock, but the cuff is. The sort that you start with a provisional cast on and then you knit them together at one point after you turn the cuff and then afterwards after that you had this Latvian braid something that I had never ever done before uh, I tried to read the instructions but I just couldn't wrap my brain around it because no it just couldn't even fathom how how what huh how, how do the yarns go so I just um, got on YouTube and you know found a, a tutorial it was not it was not easy but since I had never ever done done it before it was weird and it did, did take quite a lot of time uh, I was being extra careful not to do it too tight because I know my color work is tight, it's a knit tight, and I was afraid that this would be really, really tight. But it actually stretches pretty much like the, as it does the one here on the bottom. I was surprised how stretchy it actually was, this braid part. And what you can see, these are pearl, pearl stitches, and the knit stitches are <coughs> on the wrong side, as you can see. Ah, oh, it was very interesting. And then there was this color work part, and yeah, I'm not experienced in color work, let's see. So it was uh, not 
too easy, but of course not not extremely difficult either. Yeah, you just have to be pay attention not to yeah, do it too tight. And then some slip stitches and the heel here. I'm gonna show it in the on the foot. That's a different construction. So, <clears throat> so instead of doing a <clears throat> heel flap and gusset or the sort of um, increases that there are in the flegal heel that are sort of in, here on the sides of the <clears throat> heel. This one has the instruction starting here in the, the middle and then you just increase increase for to do this bump for, for the heel and then you do the decreases. It was kind of fun. Totally different from what I had ever done before. So that was fun to do. And then there's another section of um, color work here on the foot and then uh, graft it too. So this was <coughs> stage two for for the Tuoro sock. And they're really pretty. They are really pretty. Uh, I haven't tried them on after blocking, so I'm not sure if uh, what the what the fit is for me. But uh, I was using 3.0 millimeter needles. That's US size two and a half DPNs for that. And the pattern recommended uh, going up a needle size in the color work sections, but <laughs> Well, I was in the countryside. I had my 3.0 millimeter needles with me, and then I had significantly smaller needles for picking up stitches if needed. Uh, so uh, I didn't have anything to to um, change into, and it's pretty okay. I mean, it's not that much uh, tighter than the non-color work. Part. So it's fine. 3.0 millimeter. And yeah, I did the provisional cast on with a crochet hook. I can put a link in the show notes to that. I did try uh, another way to do it on the second sock, but I just I couldn't. So I just went back to, to the crochet hook and was okay this is size small from the pattern and it is about a European size 38 or 39 maybe I'm not I'm not quite sure either one so that's it the first actual finished object recent one uh, then there is the the one languishing project that I had, that I, it's a project that I started at the end of December last year. And it, that, of course, is the UK Sock Knitters March Mystery Sock by Rachel Cookie. And this yarn is Opal. Hmm, I think I want, no, it's here, this Opal 4-ply solid, and the color is 5187, it's 25% uh, virgin wool, 25% polyamide, and yeah, so a pattern by Rachel Coopy and I had been knitting this for quite a bit, quite a long time. This is where I was last time. So I had started the second sock, second leg of the sock, and now I finished the rest of it. And this Progress Keeper is one that I got from Five from Five's Crafts. Five's Crafts. 
uh, podcast, which is in Finnish. Um, and uh, I used my 3.0 millimeter Cirx Nitpicks Symphony Cirx, so that's a US size two and a half. I uh, I need it on Magic Loop, and <laughs> I discovered that my gauge had had um, changed a lot from from say January. I finished this first sock um, maybe January February somewhere along that line, and then started knitting this just month ago so uh, this summer anyway and uh, I've always been a tight knitter but this is even tighter than, than the first one you can sh I think even after walking you can't see it but it's not it's not too much I think I'm going to have to live with it these are from my father-in-law so this uh, the back of the leg looks like this this yeah you can see it so there is a big diamond in here with some um, twisted stitches and then there is the heel flap and then the front of the, the leg we have another sort of a smaller diamond here up here and then another one around the ankle and then the foot the top of the foot we have um sort of a start of a diamond that sort of disappears in the toes and well uh like i said my gauge has has uh, changed that was one thing that i was kind of bummed about i was like ah do i have to re-knit the first one to get a pair but yeah just decided no i don't have to then i was knitting this second sock uh, and i wasn't this is very dark dark uh, petrol blue yarn and I just couldn't see <laughs> so I made some mistakes don't know if you can see it yeah you can the this crossing should be in here and then there is another one in here so this these two stitches should have been crossed like this and not in here whoops but yeah it's fine and then <laughs> just you know a f this is a free of charge tip for anybody who's knitting a pair of socks when you're knitting the second sock before you start doing the toe decreases and especially before you do the rafting and the weaving in the ends do check that the feet are of similar length because I had marked something in the pattern because I had it printed out. I had marked the row where I had started the, the toe decreases. But what I had forgotten in, in the meantime between these two socks is that I had completed the chart once and then I had started there was this section that repeat this these rows until the foot is long enough so it was the second time i was on that row when i had started doing the toe decreases in the first sock but and i had the sock in my project bag next to me but i just yeah yeah okay that's the row i was when I started doing the toe decreases, so I started decreasing, and so I start and I grafted the toe, and then I said, "This does look kind of short," 
And then I took the first one out of the project and I was like, oh, bugger. <laughs> so, take it from me. Learn it. Learn from my mistakes. Don't do that. It's really annoying. <laughs> it really is. So, uh, I just, you know, put some smaller needles up where, where I had started the decreases then I ripped back the whole toe and the decreases and then I did some more and do did redid the toe decreases and grafted the toe and you know it's done now and the pair will be waiting for Christmas and I'm going to give it to to uh, my father-in-law for Christmas. Yeah, so that was my actual actual my third FO. This um, in this episode, but it's actually the second one I have um, finished after last episode. Then the third one, third finished object is the where I used the Lenny Doom X Machina uh, yarn. So this is the third stage of the Tour Sock. It's a pattern called Indecisions by Adrian Fong. She has designed uh, socks for the, the same event or competition earlier too. But yeah, so <clears throat> this is how it knits up. You can see it best maybe here on the sole. And the color is a very autumnal. I really like them. Maybe it's because fall is coming. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but it's really it, it's a sort of a combination of cables and lace. Let's uh, a pattern that kept repeating itself all along the foot and it started with a provisional cast on, a pico edge and then you started doing doing the pattern and then uh, if you wanted to get gain an extra point uh, you did the pico cuff and then decorative heel that I'm showing the leg so it's where this the pattern that you've already started you just continue uh, to the heel or the heel flap so it's a heel flap and gusset kind of construction there's a couple of um, garter stitch a couple of garter stitches on each side of the heel flap so that it'll be easier to pick up the stitches and then doing the decreases and okay I don't know if I'm running low on memory or something because the camera just stopped recording it's just oh come on we talked about them already <laughs> anyway, but you know, the yarn yarn is really nice, really beautiful. And like I said, it's just it's plain wool. It's not merino. It's wool, and I think it it feels like the sort of yarn that will hold really well. A bit similar to to the this this uh, Aldekunste yarn. Uh, I think they actually say which base they use for all the Oh yeah, I dropped it. It's Cit Citron or something, whatever. And uh, this yarn, I think, uh, feels a bit thicker than the Lonity Mix Machina, even though both have, I think both have 400. No, actually Lonity has even a little less. There are 
no, 420 meters in this game. Uh, and so was in this uh, Altekunste, it's so 420 meters, but it feels a bit thicker, so there's something different in the fibers, I don't know. But both, I think, feel like nice and sturdy socks. And not dreamy and soft and ooh la la, but very nice, it's like when you do a lot of work when you knit all this or all this lace and cables. Uh, you don't have to be afraid to get holes on the soles the day after you start using the socks. Yeah, so yeah, I, I like both both those uh, yarns. Uh, the size I made was medium. There was only medium or large in the pattern. Um, and oh yeah, I wanted to try and see how fast I could knit a pair of socks. So the stage started at at midnight on on a Friday, I think. Uh, I started. I had some stuff to do before I could start the sock. I'm a night owl, so staying up all night isn't really too difficult for me. But I started knitting the sock at about 1 a.m. on the Saturday. And I went to, to bed at 6. Was it 6.30? No, it's 6. And then I had my alarm go off at 9.30. And... Um, had some breakfast, took the dog out, and, and uh, continued knitting. And when I had finished the first sock, whichever it was, um, I it was five o'clock, five p.m. And when I sort of calculated how much time I had used for sleeping and eating and all that. I had used about 12 hours to knit one sock. And on this stage in the Tuola sock, the fastest knitter, who was a Finn, uh, took, I think, 10 and a half hours to knit a pair of these socks with the Pico cuff and the decorative heel. Crazy. <laughs> so, like. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not even close to being that fast. I mean, come on, wow. Right, so, so that was it. Uh, the second Tour de Soc pair that I have um, completed between these episodes. And then there's, where is it? Mm. Then there was a test knit that I um, agreed to do for Elizabeth. Elizabeth White. Um, it's a pair of fingerless mitts. And this is what it looks like. It has a lot of beads. Which are my favorite. <laughs> so, there are beads um, on the hmm, this side of the hand. I don't know which what it is. <laughs> Can't think of the word actually. So the pattern is called Triforce Mitts. Uh, it's uh, being test knit, or she's checking the the pattern, but it will be out, I think, in in a month or so. And again, the yarn I used here is Alta Künste Sockenwolle. 420, the ball band that I just dropped on the floor. <laughs> and this colorway is the chocolate colorway. And um, then I used some sort of silvery beads. Uh, I used 3.0 Adi lace needles. 
here it is, that I just bought. And it was the first time I, I tried them. Um, just wanted to see how I like them. I like the, the tips, the pointed tips. They're really nice. I actually have my knit bow, knit crows here too. Forgot. And I think the tip is kind of similar. Is it? Kind of similar, yeah. Uh, of course, this is some sort of wood, and these are metal needles. Um, they're very, very slick. And I'm not sure if I like that or not. Plus, I was a little stupid. That was my own mistake. Uh, I ordered uh, the set with an 80 centimeter board. So um, these are 100 centimeters, and I like them better for socks, even when I'm doing one at a time magic loop. Um, and when I was doing the mitts magic loop on these these needles, I sort of well, it was different. The the tips were different; they were really slick, and then the cord was different. So I'm I'm still a little undecided whether I like these or not. But yeah, that's what I used. And anyway, so the pattern for the mitts was really simple uh, as you go doing the, the thumb gusset oh, let's not show that one because it blocks my thumb let's try this yeah so the thumb gusset and then just you know and if you don't want to use the beads if you hate beading <laughs> you can do double stitches for these or you just plain plain uh, mitts with nothing with no decorations this is a really nice really nice fit for me this is size small and yeah well I haven't wet, wet these I haven't blocked or anything these um, but I think these are pretty nice in my hands very you know, they're not too loose I like it like it a lot. I'm not sure um, about the beads because there are a lot of them and they are glass beads. Um, how they'll react when the weather starts to be cold because you know glasses can be cold. Glass can be cold. So if it will feel cold at the back of my hand or not, don't know. Anyway, they're pretty and they're really fast in it. Like an afternoon to knit one. Yeah, that's it. And if I had recorded this on Saturday like I uh, planned to, I would have had a whip. But it's two days later, I have another FO. <laughs> This is uh, actually the test knit I was talking about last time. It's a, pa a pattern called Grain Shawl. It's by Nordic Stitches, who is Livy from Norway. She has her Nordic Stitches podcast. And this is my version of her Lorraine Shawl. It starts here and then you just start doing this really simple lace pattern over and over and over again. This was very, very good um, car knitting, boat knitting. <laughs> we went to, to um, we went fishing. My, my husband wanted to take us all, the whole family, fishing. And I'm, well, I, I fish. But if I have something better to do, like knitting, then yeah, I prefer that. So um, I had this with me in the boat and it was very nice because it was 
you know, so easy to do once you start and did a couple of rows and you learned the motif and yeah, very nice. I blocked it yesterday. Uh, this, oh, let's see, it was living in this bag that I bought from a thrift store or a second hand store or something. It's a handbag and it fits uh, a shawl really well. It was very handy. Uh, so, um, uh, first of all, I used my 4.0 millimeter. Um, I think these are prim wooden needles, maybe birch wood with, I'd say, 100 centimeters long cord. Yeah. Um, so four millimeters is US size. No, actually this is 80 centimeters, right? Uh, so this is uh, US size six for this shawl. And the yarns I used were Little French Meadows. So the, the blue one, where is the tag? Here. So this blue one, this really nice variegated or tonal, whatever it is, tonal, yeah, tonal blue is from Little French Meadow. It's their absolutely fingering weight yarn. So it's 100% merino, superwash merino, 400 meters in 100 grams and this colorway is called Hydrangea Blue and it's really really pretty. It makes me think of denim a lot and with, oh sorry I'm just gonna mention the other yarn <laughs> before I talk about anything else. So the, the second yarn is this Drops Baby Merinos. This is uh, I think uh, According to Ravelry, this is a sport weight yarn, I think. Uh, it's 100% merino, 100% wool, and there are 175 meters in a, in a 50 gram ball, so that that's uh, 350 in 100 grams, is it? Yeah. Well, whatever. This is very different. These two yarns are very different. They feel very different. This is very like um, sort of spongy, bouncy, and it fe feels a lot thicker. This is really, mm, I don't, wouldn't say hard, but it's very, maybe tightly spun, maybe. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Anyway, uh, so this color makes me think of denim, and because this is such a sort of a simple lace pattern, and with these colors, uh, I sort of thought that this could be good, a good shawl. For everyday use, going with the jean, jeans on, and I'm not totally sure if I'm going to keep it, keep it myself or give it to my nephew's girlfriend for Christmas, because you know, kids nowadays. I, I, she's 18, I think. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, Whenever I see them, they're in their sweat, sweatpants and t-shirts, with really big baggy t-shirts. So I can't see her in really tiny little lace, but this one I think could go well with some jeans or so. But I haven't decided. Anyway, I so when I blocked this, uh, I didn't want to make these... Uh, decorative edges that Lily herself has made when she blocked it. So if you 
block it really aggressively and you make these sort of points along this edge and it gives a, a totally different look to the shawl. I like this. I like, I think it looks good like this without any more decorations. Very nice. Uh, I just measured it. It's about 140 <clears throat> centimeters wide and 75 centimeters deep. And I think it's really nice. It looks, it looks great, I think. Yeah, I like it, but you know, a person can can a person have too many shawls? I don't know. <laughs> Actually, this was something I talked about with somebody in the Uvascula Knit Fest meet and greet sort of thing. Um, so when I started watching podcasts uh, somewhere over a year ago, I was kind of thinking that she's making another shawl. I mean, come on, how many shawls can one person need? Uh, well, now that I've gotten acquainted with more shawl patterns, uh, I can say that one person may need to make quite many shawls <laughs> but you know uh, I do have to think that maybe I could you know I can make the shawls but give them away as as presents so it's a win-win kind of thing yeah did I want to mention anything else yeah so that was the test knit actually uh, the deadline was I think August 15th but she has already released the pattern um, so you can find the Lorraine shawl on Ravelry it's a paid for pattern um, and I think it's a very nice simple shawl uh, I was kind of um, playing yarn chicken because I noticed at one point that she had Mark that you need 120 grams. Sorry, I'm just trying to find 120 grams of the main color, and I only have the one skein, so 100 grams. But no, I still have some left. <laughs> I don't know how many meters are in here, but you know. So I had plenty. I had plenty. <laughs> yeah so anyway um, Lily if you're watching uh, I'm going to I know that the pattern is out but I'm going to send you some comments anyway on the pattern I'm sure you've gotten the comments from your other testers but anyway yeah that's that is really my last FO. <laughs> so to the stash enhancement uh, section. So the Lanitium X Machina that I showed you uh, is one of them. And I already knit a pair of socks from it. And then there, there's another one. Which is also almost uh, a work in progress at the moment. Uh, I ordered some yarn for a sweater because I found this great pattern on Ravelry and I was watching a Finnish uh, podcast called Twin Kuto and they mentioned or they showed uh, a tunic from this uh, designer called Atelier Alpha I think Market somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she's Anne Lerouf. And she had an, uh, a tunic there, but it was fingering weights, yarn, and yeah, a tunic. So 
the winter is coming so I wanted to get something for winter and she had a really really nice pattern called yin yin yang dance sweater and I, I printed the pattern in black and white so that you won't be able to see the, the pictures I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to see it and then you'll just have to wait and see how mine turns out anyway so I bought some yarn for that particular uh, sweater and this is the yarn I got so I have a sweaters quantity of this this is from a, dyer, a Swiss dyer Pat de Velour and this is Céline Deca Crazy a DK, it's a DK weight yarn, 100% uh, superwash merino, 25, uh, 250 meters by 100 grams, and the colorway is called Bloody Cardamine. And it's this like speckled mauve thing, I, I'd say mauve. I just I just fell in love with it when I was checking her web website and I have caked one up because I have already made some swatch this is how it looks caked up so I think it's pretty pretty much what it looks like on the skein really nice and I've started a swatch here I haven't measured it yet because it's not big enough but you know I really like it I really like it um, so this is what I got I have more skeins elsewhere and they the needles I'm using at the moment and I think they'll be the gauge will be okay with these this is a four millimeter uh, interchangeable tip from knit picks and I know that some people have had problems with the uh, knit picks interchangeables with this coming loose and you know, eventually coming off uh, yes I did have a problem a few times I'm not sure if I had tightened it well enough or not but we'll see I just have to try and see but this will be a really really gorgeous sweater it has cables and lace and uh, i-cord stuff and uh, it looks really nice and I hope that I'll I'll get to show you something uh, next time we'll see <laughs> we'll see how it goes um, yeah but yeah when I ordered the yarn from her she contacted me and said that she usually uh, sends some samples and I was uh, allowed to make a request which sample which base I would like to uh, see a sample of and okay so this is something I will definitely <laughs> order when I want a really dreamy soft uh, shawl so I have three different weights of this 70% um, baby alpaca 20% uh, oh man what is it in English well, silk <laughs> and 10% cashmere my goodness it is so soft and uh, this is Marquis fingering so it's a 400 meters 400 grams very oh my goodness uh, it's kind of loosely spun I, maybe you can see it can you 
kind of loosely spun, but in a shawl that really doesn't matter at all. And it's so soft. And then there is uh, the same yarn in DK weight. DK, DK. And then Aaron weight. Aaron. All with the same fiber content. Um, and this is just super, super soft. Oh my goodness. This is what I wanted to get a sample of this so that I would. Because I think the price wasn't too bad. And I was really thought that this would be a realistic yarn that I, I might um, order. And oh, yes, I will. Yes, I definitely will. When I need it for a certain uh, project. But for the moment, as you know, <laughs> I have a sweater to do. Uh, and then, oh, I forgot to show you a whip. A real whip. And not just... And as almost whip, which is the sweater, because okay, let me back it up a little bit. I have one work in progress. <laughs> it's for a friend, and uh, she's I saw in this in the Girl Scouts. I think she's some sort of a scout leader or something. And they have a meeting or a get together coming up this end of this month and for that get together they have uh, or somebody has designed a pair of socks and not everybody has to have those socks but you know you could if you wanted to I think anyway <clears throat> she contacted me and asked me if I could knit her these socks it's uh, a pattern called polku which is a uh, Try a trail, pattern, something like that. Uh, and the de designer is Hanna Holmros. And this is what I've started. So these are the the trails that cross over each other. And the yarn that was suggested in the pattern and that I use is Yestal Maya. It's a Norwegian yarn. It's well, where is it? I think so. It's a 130 meters in 50 grams. So that means 260 meters in 100 grams. 85 percent wool, 15 <coughs> percent polyamide. And there are three colors: so this dark navy blue. And then there is this white. And so the blue one is 206, the white is 202, and then there is this sort of orange 236. And <clears throat> you use the orange for the cuff, and then you go and do this slip stitch uh, pattern with the blue and the white. And then there, the, the pattern says that make a, a short row heel, and it's a, an hourglass heel, D, Mazikan, Baba, in Finnish. Uh, just, you know, go to YouTube and you'll find the instructions there. Well, I think I have tried this type of short row heel once before, and I didn't like it because. I didn't like the end result. So I went to YouTube and they had these German short rows for turning and when you when you had done the short rows it said to do one row or one round one plain round. Well, I'm using orange for the toe, for the heel. Have I been talking about toes? Heel, I mean heel. Anyway, um, so I couldn't do that. I just knit all of the heel stitches with that 
orange and then I started doing the, the other rows. rows, increasing rows, whatever. Uh, and yeah, from this side, side it's, it's okay, yeah, right? But this one is unacceptable. These are really, uh, there are holes in here and I hate it. So fortunately, this is not the only heel there is in the world, <laughs> the only heel construction. So what I'm going to do is just take it all out, put some markers in for an afterthought heel and knit the sock and, and do an afterthought heel in this orange. Uh, the end result will be very similar, uh, but the heel will be a lot better because <laughs> this is just not, this is not good. I think you can't really see all the holes, but there are big holes in here. And, and if it was for myself, maybe I could leave it at that. But since it is for a friend who asked me, nah. So uh, I did all, all of this leg yesterday. This is DK weight yarn. So. And actually this pattern is pretty fun because it, it is kind of potato chippy. You want to go and see where it goes next. Yeah, so it was kind of fun to knit this. I'm hoping that walking will help with this lumpiness. And it will, yeah. Anyway, so this is what I'm, this is actually my whip for the moment. And, um, I will try and get this as far as I can today because the next stage of the Dora Sock uh, starts, so it's the fourth stage. It starts tomorrow morning, my time, at 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. <laughs> so um, I want to get these as far as I can and then I'm going to the uh, what I do with the sock. Mm, the specs we know, uh, especially the gauge, implies that it could be mosaic. And uh, there was a mosaic pattern last year on the Tuo sock. Um, and yeah, I I did it. I, I finished it before deadline, right before deadline. Um, I, uh, it wasn't my favorite, but we'll see. We'll see what I, well, first of all, when I see the pattern, I'll see what I uh, think of it and then decide whether I want to kind of just try and pull through or, or plow through <laughs> or, or if I'm going to just lay back and maybe finish the, these these socks and then get knitting the, the two other socks, socks. I don't know. One or the other. So that's what I was doing at the moment and I think I've lost my what I, whatever I was wanting to wanting to talk to you about. Anyway, uh, actually I I've taken part in different knit alongs this this year. One of them was <clears throat> the summer lace along uh, with uh, Lena Knits. It's a Finnish podcast, a Finnish podcaster who podcasts in English. And so, if you haven't checked her out, you should. <laughs> uh, but she had this summer lace along. So yeah, I, I entered my Royal Mile in, in that cow and I won. I won one of her uh, patterns and I chose, well, there was a couple of patterns that I kind of debated um, between, but then I decided that on a shawl fluttering wings, I think it is, you'll see it in the future, but just not right away. Yeah, 
that's it. Um, I'm having trouble with this tablet. <laughs> it keeps cutting me off. Anyway, so let's get uh, to the non-knitting stuff. So if you're here only for the knitting um, and you're a returning viewer, thanks for stopping by. See you next time. If you're a new viewer, uh, I hope you liked what you saw. Uh, you might want to consider hitting the subscribe button. I'd like that. And of course, the thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, I know that some people sort of don't like getting the thumbs down. I I don't even know if I've gotten any thumbs down, but I don't take it personally. I know that there are different podcasters and different people like different things. So if, if you don't like my podcast, uh, yeah, you're, you're entitled to your opinion and that's fine. Anyway, but yeah, do subscribe if you haven't and go to the Ravelry uh, group uh, and enter for the giveaway. Uh, but yeah, for the non-knitting <laughs> related uh, comments that I got after last episode, so um, and quite a lot of you um, people commented on my daughter who appeared <laughs> towards the end of the episode. Everybody thought she was cute and fun and, and enjoyed seeing her and thank you. I, I also think that she's a bundle of joy uh, but she does break my concentration. <laughs> well, I don't have anything to break my concentration here but I haven't been totally coherent. Sorry about that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> But um, I do prefer to record alone. If I can do it uh, outside, yeah, that's fine. But actually today I'm kind of short on time because I want to get this uploaded, ready and uploaded today. Yeah, but um, about my, my daughter, Heather, who's Heather01851. On Ravelry asked me if I'd been teaching my daughter some English because yeah, I noticed it too that when I was talking about the yarns and I talked about the colors she was repeating black you know the different colors um, I haven't actually well haven't taught her per se she watches YouTube I know that some people may think it's bad parenting but uh, I learned from, from my accent from TV. I was watching, you know, thanks to Melrose Place and Beverly Hills 90210 and, and of course Dallas and Dynasty and all those that were on our TV when I was growing up. And so I learned the accent from there. I learned, I've learned a lot of uh, vocabulary, grammar stuff, all that from TV. So I no, it can be bad, but there is always at least two sides of, of the story. So she uh, is allowed to watch YouTube and there are tons of kids videos and songs and all that stuff in there or on you on YouTube. And uh, there are these videos where you, where you get the colors and it's like orange, red, blue. And that's where, where she has learned different colors and the alphabet and parts of the body and all that, numbers. So um, she's learned a lot from there. And of course, every once in a while, she will ask me, Mommy, what is that, this and that in English? And I'll, I'll tell her or the other way around. Um, what's that in Finnish? Yeah, just got cut off again. <laughs> yeah, but you know, that's where she has learned most of her English. And and I think it's it's fun. It's fun to watch. And she does like to watch other kids programs in other languages. I mean, she watches Kayu, which is 
Finnish. So you can usually watch that in Spanish and also in English, I think. She likes to watch Masha and the Bear in, in the original Russian version. Uh, and she's learned some sort of Russian phrases from there. I don't speak at all Russian, so that's I, I really think that's fascinating. And I enjoy uh, seeing what sort of things little kids can uh, learn all by themselves. So, yeah, that's it. Okay, then another um, uh, comment, Judy, uh, who is 2B Loop 2 on Ravelry, uh, asked me about reading charts. Uh, it's a very good idea, and I will talk about reading charts in a future episode where I'll have some um, examples to show you where you know to better explain how I have learned to uh, read charts because I do prefer charts to written instructions it's easier uh, and then um, at least Nikki who's an NNZ knitter from New Zealand asked about you know what my part of Finland looks like and and uh, traditions and weather and all that. Um, I'll try and talk a little more about that in one of the future episodes. Today I've had a lot of things to, <laughs> to say, so I'll save that for later too. Sorry, I totally forgot <laughs> to tell you what the little scenery bits were at the beginning of the episode. So um, that was from uh, Saturday a week from now, uh, so a week ago. Uh, we just took a small boat trip to, um, well, I was, we, the whole family we were at the countryside at my mother-in-law's and we just took the boat, which, you know, her, her boat, so a little motor boat, um, not a lot bigger than a rowing boat um, and we drove to this island which has this beautiful beach um, white sand and all that and the sun was shining uh, quite a bit but there was a lot of wind so <laughs> it wasn't that uh, warm it was beautiful though and um, I took some photos from the same trip and I'll probably uh, end this episode with those with those nice photos of of that beautiful day yeah so uh for what's next so the polka socks please then my yin yang dance sweater <clears throat> and of course the stage four for the two of a sock which starts tomorrow so that's sort of my um immediate future plans <laughs> or well the most immediate will be to try and get all these little segments bits and pieces of video uh, on my computer and then edit it and uh, get it uh, uploaded onto YouTube anyway be sure to enter the Podiversary giveaway uh, yeah yeah, that's <laughs> comment on the thread. <laughs> and um, I do uh, welcome all, all uh, comments e either here on YouTube or over on Ravelry. You can PM me if you want. And um, yeah, uh, like I said, it's back to the drawing board for the kids. Uh, and of course, for us too, we'll be spending time here at home which uh, will mm, possibly mean that I have a better chance at recording every two weeks maybe uh, I can't promise anything because you know life is what it is but I'll try to uh, do it every two weeks yeah until then I hope you get some knitting done I hope you have some nice weather we like we have at the moment uh, and um, 
I, I'll see you when I see you. Go and uh, enter the giveaway on Ravelry, please. Yeah, bye.